1. The reader is requested to notice this distinction between actual and legal value, as we shall have occasion to refer to it again. 2. Money is merchandise just like any other merchandise, precisely as the trump is a card just like any other card. 3. Money and banking, or their nature and effects considered. Together with a plan for the universal diffusion of their legitimate benefits without their evils. By a citizen of Ohio Cincinnati, published by William Beck, 1839. 16 Mo, 212 pp4. These remarks may be generalized, and applied to the commerce which is carried on between nations. 5. I now undertake to affirm positively, and without the least fear that I can be answered, whether to for I have but suggested, that a paper issued by the government, with the simple promise to receive it in all its dues, leaving its creditors to take it or gold and silver at their option, would, to the extent that it would circulate, form a perfect paper circulation, which could not be abused by the government that it would be as steady and uniform in value as the metals themselves. And that, if by possibility, it should depreciate, the loss would fall, not on the people, but on the government itself, etc. J.C. Calhoun, speech in reply to Mr. Webster on the Sub-Treasury Bill, March 22, 1838. 6. Malthus says we quote the substance and very possibly the exact words, though we have not the book by us if a man is born into a world already occupied, and his family is not able to support him, or if society has no demand for his labor, that man has no right to claim any nourishment whatever. He is really one too many on the earth. At the great banquet of nature there is no plate laid for him. Nature commands him to take himself away and she will by no means delay in putting her own order into execution. 7. North Carolina, just after the Revolution, issued a large amount of paper, which was made receivable in dues to her. It was also made a legal tender, which, of course, was not obligatory after the adoption of the federal constitution. A large amount, say between four and $500,000, remained in circulation after that period, and continued to circulate for more than 20 years, at par with gold and silver during the whole time, with no other advantage than being received in the revenue of the state, which was much less than $100,000 per annum. John C. Calhoun, speech on the bill authorizing an issue of Treasury Notes, September 19, 1837. 8. Thus the whole principal would be paid up in 20 years. 9. See foregoing paragraph where it is said that debts to the bank might be paid in manufactures and produce. 10. We are told that there is no instance of a government paper that did not depreciate. In reply I affirm that there is none assuming the form I propose notes receivable by government in payment of dues that ever did depreciate. Whenever a paper receivable in the dues of government had anything like a fair trial, it has succeeded. Instance the case of North Carolina referred to in my opening remarks. The drafts of the Treasury at this moment with all their encumbrance, are nearly at par with gold and silver. And I might add the instance alluded to by the distinguished senator from Kentucky, in which he admits, that as soon as the excess of the issues of the Commonwealth Bank of Kentucky were reduced to the proper point, its notes rose to par. The case of Russia might also be mentioned. In 1827 she had a fixed paper circulation in the form of bank notes, but which were in convertible, of upward of $120 million, estimated in the metallic ruble, and which had for years remained without fluctuation having nothing to sustain it but that it was received in the dues of government, and that, too, with a revenue of only about $90 million annually, John C. Calhoun, speech on his amendment to separate the government from the banks, 
October 3, 1837. 11. People who raise the cry of cheap money fall into the same error. Money that circulates freely at par, whether interest-bearing or not, is neither cheap or dear. Editor. 12. Persons of little foresight rejoice in the high price of commodities, that is, in the low price of plentiful ease of money, not reflecting that, when money is too plentifully, the stream to enrich foreign lands. An excessive supply of money causes a deceitful appearance of prosperity, and favors temporarily a few manufacturers, traders and mechanics. But it is always a source of unnumbered calamities to the whole country. 13. Perhaps on account of those explanations. As heat melts wax and hardens clay, so the same general principles, as applied to merchandise money and to mutual money give opposite results. 14. If, however, the inconvenience is anything, the lender ought to be indemnified. But such indemnification is not properly interest. 15. Perhaps, we ought rather to say, would be profoundly immoral in a more perfect social order. We suppose that must be considered right, in our present chaotic state, which is best on the whole, or which, taking men's passions as they are, is unavoidable.